My like best advice for communities who have a really clear view of how they're going to be affected by climate change specifically is to start organizing now. If you're on the coast, even if you think you have another 10 years before flooding becomes a real problem for your community, no, start organizing now. You're listening to The Response a podcast and documentary series exploring the remarkable communities that arise in the aftermath of disasters. I'm your host, Tom Llewellyn, and today we're bringing you an extended interview with Dr. Samantha Montano, an assistant professor of emergency management and disaster science at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Dr. Montano's research focuses on a wide scope of topics within the field of emergency management, including community organizing, emergent groups, preparedness for recovery, and disaster volunteerism. When discussing climate change these days, it's no longer suitable to simply imagine its impacts on future generations. It's also not exactly appropriate to imagine the result of climate change as being some kind of apocalyptic end of the world scenario. Climate change is happening right now, and its impacts are going to absolutely devastate some communities while leaving others relatively intact Of course, there are a number of environmental and geographic factors that will determine how impacts are spread. But perhaps the most important factors are things like class, race, gender, or immigration status. The human rights community has come up with a term for this phenomenon, climate apartheid. Series producer Robert Raymond spoke with Dr. Montano about her path to becoming a disasterologist, the history of disaster management in the United States, and who it was designed to serve the role gender plays in determining the severity of a disaster's impact, and why we should rethink referring to disasters as natural at all. I'll let Robert take it from here. Hey, Samantha. Uh, Welcome to The Response. I'm wondering if you could just introduce yourself to our listeners and uh, let us know how you got into the work that you're currently doing. Sure. So um, I first got my start in disaster work in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina and the levee failure. I was in high school when Katrina happened and I was living in Maine. So I was like very far removed from what was going on in New Orleans and really just didn't even have a sense of hurricanes and like what catastrophic flooding even looked like. Um, but I had the opportunity to go to the city on a volunteer trip uh, over spring break through my high school. And I got to New Orleans and I was just absolutely shocked at the extent of the damage. Truly, it was catastrophic. Every single street you looked down, it, it just looked like complete devastation. And in the process of being there that week, I talked to a lot of survivors, talked to a lot of volunteers who were there kind of more long term, uh, worked with a bunch of different nonprofit organizations. And I really just kind of the full picture of what the recovery from the flood was going to look like kind of came into view for me. And I realized that this really was like an all hands on deck situation and that, you know, the city needed help, right? There weren't the resources, especially in certain neighborhoods to do all of the recovery work that needed to be done. And so I decided to move to New Orleans. When I turned 18, I went to Loyola University in New Orleans, uh, majored in psychology and sociology. And while I was in school there, I spent my weekends and nights working with various nonprofits, volunteering for different things, basically just working on like anything related to recovery in the city that I kind of found needed to be done. And so that's kind of how I got my start. While I was living there, the BP oil disaster happened along the coast, and some of the environmental groups I worked with kind of extended their work down there, and I kind of went with them. Um, And I started to go to some other communities around the South and in the Midwest that were experiencing tornadoes and whatnot. And so I started to just kind of get this sense that, you know, even though we think of disasters as being these really isolated incidents, there are actually similar situations happening every time there's a disaster, right? The same challenges are coming up, the same organizations are involved. 
And so that essentially led me to kind of question the approach we take to managing disasters and kind of questioning how effective and efficient and just that approach is. And so I went to graduate school. I got my uh, master's and doctoral degree in emergency management from North Dakota State University. And now I research disasters. I do a lot of science communication and public outreach related to how disasters and climate change are related. And I am an assistant professor at University of Nebraska, Omaha in the emergency management and disaster science program. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit the responsepodcast.org or find the response wherever you get your podcasts.